Hello, I'm Charles from Charles in Photography. Many people when they get into macro photography and they start doing a bit of research, they find that there's two ways to get into macro photography. The first way is using macro extension tubes and then there is macro lenses. Now, some people get a little bit confused about should I buy macro extension tubes to get into macro photography or should I just go out and buy a macro lens? Let me start off by saying you can buy a set of macro extension tubes for around $25 on eBay. Whereas a macro lens, even used, will set you back around $400. So that is a very big difference, more than 10 times the difference. Now, what do you get for $25? And if we're talking used, what do you get for around $400? Now understand this is used, brand new, macro lenses start at around 700 odd dollars and go to around 1200 dollars depending on the brand that you're buying so should you just buy macro extension tubes or should you just go and fork out and buy a macro lens well let's start with the pros and cons with for both of them macro extension tubes are relatively cheap at around 25 30 dollars on ebay brand new the reason they're so cheap is because there is no lens involved. You have to use a lens. Now, when I was using macro extension tubes, I was actually using it with my Nikon 18 to 140 mil, most of the time extended to 140 mils. Now, the problem with macro extension tubes is that you're relying on the quality of your lens. And because most people start out with extension tubes with a kit lens, you're not going to get the crisp sharpness that you could get with a macro lens. But when you start out in something, you're not seeking perfection. You're really seeking to see if this part of the hobby is suitable for you, if you can actually manage to actually shoot macro photos. Now understand, macro photography is a niche and it takes time to actually learn how to actually photograph things in macro like this nice little succulent that I actually took a few photos of before. The biggest downside to macro extension tubes is that if I pull these apart this is a one-time extension tube, this is a two-time extension tube and this is a three-time extension tube. They do state millimeters on here, but basically it comes down to one, two, and three time. So if we're looking at a standard lens and we're putting, let's say, the three time extension tube on here, we're actually moving the lens quite a fair way away from our camera. So we're going to get three times the magnification at whatever focal length we are shooting at. So if I was shooting at 140 mil, Whatever my subject is here, when I put the three time extension tube on, I'm going to be magnifying it by three. So 300%. So I'm getting a very nice detail of the image. But the con with using an extension tube is because the lens is so far away from the camera, I'm actually losing three times the amount of light compared to just if I was using the lens. This is the biggest negative you could say with macro extension tubes is that the more extension tubes you put on, the more light you lose. So imagine if you had the three, the two and the one time extension tube on your lens. So this gives you a magnification of six times. So your subject is going to be magnified quite a bit, but you are losing six times the amount of light. This is for me. The biggest drawback but when you're getting into macro photography like I just said you can accept that because all you're trying to do is see whether macro photography is for you so you just have to understand this that using extension tubes you are going to lose some light also the sharpness of your image highly depends on the quality of the lens now because most people, myself included, use a kit lens. When we're getting into macro photography, the image isn't going to be as sharp as a macro lens. It's just common sense. But 
when I started I wasn't looking and I knew that I wasn't going to get the same crisp sharpness if I was pixel peeping into my image that I would get from the macro lens. But that doesn't mean that the image isn't sharp. It just means it would be sharper with a macro lens. There is just various degrees of sharpness and how critical you want to be when you're looking at your photos. Just like these photos that I took. But you will see in the images between the extension tube and the macro lens that the extension tube still gave me sharp images. So for me, the biggest drawback with extension tubes is that we lose light and that we're relying on the lens for sharpness. If we've got a better lens, we're going to get a sharper image. Now, for me, the only negative for a macro lens is the initial cost. Around six to seven hundred dollars if you're buying new is quite a bit of money to outlay into a niche area that you are unsure of whether you actually are going to succeed in this. Anybody can succeed, it just depends if you have the time and the will to actually go through with persevering and with learning the, the skills involved in actually photographing macro. Let's look at some images that I took of this succulent with the macro extension tubes and with the macro lens. Now to keep it fair all the photos were taken in JPEG and because the Takina is 100 mils all the photos that I took with this lens was taken at 100 mils. Now all the settings were the same. Now all the images were shot at 1 25th of a second and either at f5.6 or at f16. The only setting that I changed throughout all the photos was the ISO. This is to show you the amount of light that we lose when we're taking the various photos. So the first set of photos that I took was taken without any extension tubes on the Nikon 18 to 140 mil at 100 mils. Then I added the two time extension tubes. Then I added the three time extension tubes. Then I actually took the lens off and I put the 100 mil macro lens and I took some photos at f5.6 and at f16. So let's take a look at these photos now. These are the photos that I took of this succulent plant. The first six photos were taken with the Nikon 18 to 140 mil lens at 100 mils. The first two were taken without extension tubes at f5.6 and f16. The next two were taken with two time extension tubes at f5.6 and f16. The following two were taken with the three time extension tubes at f5.6 and f16. And the last two were taken with the macro lens at f5.6 and f16. All the photos were taken at 1 25th of a second and the aperture was either set at f5.6 or f16. I chose f5.6 because on the Nikon 18 to 140 millimeter lens this is the minimum f-stop that I can use at 100 mil. So I kept this f-stop constant through all the photos and then I chose f16 because if we were shooting in macro with a macro lens to get a lot of detail and a bit of depth at field we would be using f16 and you can see that on the extension tube photos the more, bigger the extension tube we use the more ISO that we need so we're actually losing quite a bit of light. So now let's look at the first photo you can see before I go any further here there is a little blue square here this is where I focused on all the images so the focus point never changed through any of these images so this is the first photo taken without extension tubes at f5.6 and our ISO is 500 the next one taken at f16 the ISO value is 2500 now with the two time extension tube our ISO 
goes from ISO 500 to ISO 640. So you can see that we've actually lost a bit of light. And at F16, it's actually increased again to ISO 4000. With the three time extension tube at F5.6, you can actually see that our ISO is 1000. So this is double the amount if we weren't using extension tubes. Now this is at F16 and our ISO value is 5000. Now with the macro lens at F5.6, the ISO value is 400. This is the lowest ISO value in all the F5.6 images that I took. And at F16, our ISO value is 3200, which is also the lowest ISO value for all of our images. If we just compare the photos taken at F5.6 without extension tubes and with extension tubes and our macro lens, we can actually see a slight difference in sharpness. So this is our first image. This is the second image with the two time extension tube. This is with the three time extension tube. And this is with the macro lens. And even at F5.6, you can see between the macro lens and the extension tube that the sharpness is greater on the macro lens than it is with extension tubes. But this does not mean that the image is not sharp. Like I stated earlier, there is just various degrees in sharpness. So you can actually see in this photo that the macro lens will give you a sharper image, but at a cost. If we look at the images taken at F16, you'll actually see a similar effect. So this is with the two time, with the three time, and now with the macro lens. Now, there's also a slight difference in color here. This is mainly because of the lens. All the settings of my camera stayed the same. All the images were shot in JPEG, but you can just see that the Takina actually renders the photo much sharper and has better color saturation. And you can see that at F16, between the macro lens and the three time extension tube, that there is also an increase in sharpness in the macro lens. Now, I shot these images in RAW as well. And if we were editing these images, I could actually get a bit more sharpness out of these extension tube photos. But I just want to show the difference. The images were shot in JPEG straight off the camera to give you a very clear example of the differences between extension tubes and macro lens. I hope this gives you an idea of the difference and as you can see there is not a lot of difference just in the sharpness of the images. I believe if you're starting in macro photography then buy extension tubes. If you have a real passion and you have the commitment to actually go into macro photography then just go out and buy a macro lens. But most people will tell you, if you do a bit of research, that the best bet is actually to buy extension tubes. That way you actually get a feel for macro photography, you'll understand the torrents involved and how tight you actually have to actually photograph to actually get a sharp image. And then when you're satisfied that you've actually quite competent in macro photography, you can actually go out and buy a macro lens. So if this video has helped you, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you've got a comment or some feedback, leave it in the comment box below. This is Charles for Charles in Photography. See you next time.